This video is brought to you by Cool Green Clothing. Cool Green Clothing is a Baltimore-based clothing line that started back in 2018 and has been growing strong ever since. Make sure you follow Cool Green Clothing on Facebook and IG at Cool Green Clothing and check out their website, coolgreenclothing.com, where you can find the latest Cool Green fashions and hats, women's apparel, and the latest men's collection. Remember, if you ain't coolin' and get in the green, you're in the way. Ralph Lauren, name is Brandon Itself. That's yes, what I did myself. Yes, My name is AC Green. Yes, so I yes, turn AC to cool, you got cool green. Mm -hmm. And if you ain't cool and get in the green, you're in the way. That's just basic. You know what I mean? Gang, gang. So, yeah. Hey, the cool green is the shit. <laughs> the cool green is, if you don't get no other authentic t shirt, come down here to my man and represent for the brother Cool Green Clothing. <laughs> That's C-O-O-L G-R-E-E-N clothing line. That's why I spell the it best, out for the him, best, man. The best clothing line you could ever, ever get, bro. The <laughs> best clothing line. The good Cool Green. Man, how you hear about us? Been through the good video with man Tony two times. <laughs> all the way from Annapolis to support Cool Green. My man come down all the way from Annapolis, man. That's What's going on, YouTube fan? It's your boy Tony two times, and we back with another episode of the Baltimore Way, man. Before I start, be sure to like, comment, share, watch the video to the end. Let's get right into it. In inner cities all over the world, kids grow up saying so much, they start believing it's the right and only way to live. Hustlers, robbers, and killers are not the only kind of people living in a bad environment. But most of the time, that's the majority. Imagine being 15 or 16 years old, nothing to eat at home, wearing dirty clothes, not even money to go to the laundry. That was a part of my situation at one point, but that's not uncommon when you're coming up in poverty. Some people judge and feel like you or your parents should do something to make it better. But I know firsthand, it's not that easy. But we are not talking about me today. Instead, we will be discussing a young man named Dante Harris. Dante was living with his mother in Gilmore Homes Projects in West Baltimore. Allegedly around about 15 or 16, Dante, like most inner city kids, began to soak up the energy in the environment he was growing up in and began to get in a little bit of trouble. Allegedly, the team began stealing cars and catching a few charges. Within a few months, Dante had been charged with stealing four cars, skipped a few court dates, and allegedly escaped from a juvenile facility. Dante's grades were dropping in school, and his focus became more on his environment at the time than his future. But with the crime rate in Baltimore already at a high, and beds in the juvenile facility held more so for juveniles with more serious charges such as attempts, murders, and robberies, Dante was able to be released on the box and home confinement while awaiting his court dates. But things would go from bad to worse for Dante. He was allegedly not feeling the home confinement and wasn't worried about the box. He wanted to be outside where the people and action was. But one day him and three other alleged friends would go to Baltimore County, the Perry Hall area to be exact, to allegedly hit a few houses to make a couple dollars. But the county, especially that part, was a lot different from the city with police patrolling almost all the time. Dante and his friends were in a black Jeep when a female police officer named Amy Capri spotted the vehicle and felt as though something wasn't right. Once she got out the car to investigate, she allegedly screamed at the driver to get out, which was Dante. But now, all the way in the county and scared in a situation that could go down bad, Dante ducked down in the car and hit the gas trying to get out the jam. But the vehicle struck the officer, and she would unfortunately lose her life. 16 at the time, this situation would change his life forever. As police closed in on Dante and took him in for an interview, they alleged Dante confessed to what happened, but told the police he wasn't trying to hurt her, he felt like his life was in danger, and it was a life and death situation. But he was arrested and then arraigned. Dante was charged with murder, and burglary, in which he just slumped in his chair and cried once he realized how serious the charges were. His mother was hurt as well during the press conference. She stated she tried everything to get Dante back on track, 
and the system failed her son by not keeping him detained. But it was clear Dante was not a killer and was just a misguided team. As the case went on, prosecutors painted Dante as a one-man crime spree. And even though 16, he would be charged as an adult as time went on. Now 17 years old, Dante was found guilty on the charges he told the courts he didn't mean to hurt anyone and wishes he could go back to that day, but it was too late. At just 17 years old, at sentencing, Dante was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of the officer. His mother and the young man was crushed. It's sad that a teenager could be given life when they say the male brain doesn't fully develop until you are around about 21. Dante wasn't a cold-blooded killer, just an inner city youth doing what kids do. This case hit home for me because I was 17 charged as an adult as well and caught a felony that would hunt me for life, and now I'm 34. I was denied every juvenile right and facility it was. My question is not saying Dante's actions were right, but if he was clearly unstable at the time, why not keep him at a juvenile facility to get the discipline or at least finish school? It seems like the state already knew he would catch another charge. Then they could really do what they want and convict him as an adult. Rest in peace to the officer that lost her life. Sometimes sitting down for a few months can save our life. Nobody likes jail, but as a team, it could help. It definitely helped me. But now Dante's life was in the judge's hand for one bad mistake at 16 years old. But hey, that's the Baltimore way. Man, crazy story, you feel me? Definitely rest in peace to the officer that lost her life. Sad story, but the situation, man, you know, after Freddie Gray and all the police brutality, I really feel like Shorty probably was scared for his life. She probably had her blicky out. He probably thought if him and his friends got out the car, they was gonna blick at him, you feel me? Or she was gonna blick at him. Then his friends probably was telling him like, nah, just drive, just drive. So yeah, Shorty got life plus like 20 years for the burglary, so they ain't go easy on him. But like his mother said, they kept letting him out, they kept letting him out, you know what I mean? Knowing he was unstable and knowing his mind wasn't on track. And Shorty just like taking cars, you know? I mean, that's a small crime compared to a lot of other stuff that go on in the city. So at the end of the day, he wasn't no murderer, cold-blooded. He just got caught up in a cold-blooded situation, man. Crazy, man, you feel me? Dang, I feel for Shorty. Hopefully, he can come home on a pill and he ain't gotta spend the rest of his life in prison. 17 years old, man, you don't really know what you're doing. But yeah, man, this is another episode of The Baltimore Way. Be sure to like, comment, and share. I appreciate the love and support, fam. We on that road to 50K. I love y'all. This your boy Tony two times. I'm out.